Hello and welcome to my presentation titled Relaxation of Electrical Resistance in Carbon Nanotube Polymer Composites. My name is Wolfgang Klim and I am a doctoral student with Dr. Kawai Kwok at the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at the University of Central Florida. Let me quickly sketch out my presentation. I'll provide an overview of piezo-resistive nanocomposites with an emphasis on long-term measurement and the influence of viscoelasticity. Next, I will cover existing studies and their shortcomings. And then we will already jump into the experimental determination of a multi-axial master curve with the time-temperature superposition principle. The resulting master curve is then incorporated into our finite element model for pH resistivity, which I will also briefly introduce. Finally, we will look at the preliminary results from the simulations and then conclude the presentation. Let me start with a brief introduction into piezo-resistive nanocomposites. This class of materials combines electrically insulating materials such as polymers or ceramics with highly conductive filler materials, as for instance carbon nanotubes, graphene platelets or carbon black, to form a conducting microstructure. The conductivity of the microstructure is highly sensitive to deformations and thus can be utilized in strain sensing. Possible applications include shape sensing in deployable structures, motion sensors as seen in the upper right corner, and more general structural health monitoring as depicted in the lower figure. Here, a carbon nanotube yarn is utilized for strain sensing and carbon fiber towels. These examples uh, emphasize the highly varying influence of time on the sensor characterization, since motion sensing is an ultra-rapid process, for example, compared to the usually slow deployment of space structures or even slower long-term structural health monitorings. Consequently, the magnitude of viscoelastic effects varies greatly across these different applications. For our long-term measurements, sensor stability and st repeatability are crucial. However, previous experiments have identified a lack of such repeatability in both cyclic and long-term sensing, as illustrated in the figure on the right-hand side. The suspected factors are matrix yielding, plasticity, fracture and viscoelasticity. While the first three certainly play a major role in the sensor behavior, experiments have also shown that viscoelasticity affects the electrical resistance over time, yet no clear explanation exists for the underlying mechanism. The similar time dependency of the relaxation of electrical resistance and mechanical stress respectively is a strong indicator of their relationship. Existing models have utilized uniaxial linear viscoelasticity to describe the stress relaxation or creep behavior. The conductive nanotube network, however, is affected by deformations in all spatial directions. In literature, the Poisson's ratio is commonly assumed to be constant in order to describe the three-dimensional mechanical behavior. This assumption leads to constant transfer strains in the stress relaxation and cannot explain an electrical resistance change from a mechanical standpoint. In addition, the definition of a Poisson's ratio in viscoelasticity is not straightforward and should be replaced with a more robust approach, which we will see in the next slide. The most fundamental definition of the Poisson's ratio is provided first. While the essential definition based on strain remains, the strains introduce a path dependency due to their dependency on time, stress, and the time-stress history. This leads to different Poisson's ratios determined by stress relaxation tests and creep tests. Additional definitions for the Poisson ratio in viscoelasticity exist but cannot overcome this issue either. Therefore, we propose an alternative three-dimensional viscoelastic material model via the dilatational and deviatoric material description, specifically in its compliance formulation. Here we have to determine the bulk creep compliance B and the shear creep compliance J, which do not suffer from the path dependency. Choosing a compliance formulation over the stiffness formulation has practical reasons. For one, our tensile testing setup can maintain constant stress at a far better accuracy than constant strain. Two, the interconver interconversion among the compliances is a simple algebraic equation compared to the stiffness interconversion using utilizing three convolution integrals. And three, the creep compliances can be converted to the relaxation modular counterparts if that is, the pref if that is preferred in subsequent analysis. In order to determine the bulk creep compliance and the shear creep compliance, a series of three hour long creep tests at various temperatures was executed with a rectangular PMTF7 specimen. The temperatures covered were 40 to 80 degrees Celsius in 5 degrees Celsius, in Celsius increments to allow a robust application of the time temperature superposition principle. During the creep test, both the axial and transfer strain were recorded with a P strain gauge. By assuming an instantaneous creep load application and identical creep strains in the transverse and through thickness direction, the viscoelastic convolution integrals reduced to algebraic equations as seen in the middle of the slide. Due to the small, small volumetric strain introduced by a uniaxial tensile test, the uniaxial creep compliance D 
can be determined from the experimental creep strains instead of the bulk creep compliance B. The bulk creep compliance can then be calculated from the algebraic equation between B, D, and J. Finally, if we also would like to determine the relaxation moduli, the convolution integrals towards the bottom of the slide provide the necessary mathematical tools. Here are our experimental multi-axial master curves. The creep compliances are on the left-hand side. First, I would like to point out that the shear creep compliance is considerably higher and creeps at a higher rate than the uniaxial and bulk creep compliance. This behavior is as expected. We can also see the bulk creep compliance reduce and thus a decrease in compressibility. This phenomenon stems from the accelerated creep in the transverse direction at the highest temperatures and must be further investigated due to the large time shift and the small magnitude of volumetric strain. However, if we have the choice between the two most common assumptions for viscoelastic material descriptions, namely a constant Poisson ratio or a constant bulk modulus, the latter assumption appears to be the superior approximation. The relaxation moduli on the right-hand side behave correspondingly. The shear and uniaxial relaxa relaxation moduli reduce at their respective rates, while the bulk relaxation modulus approaches infinity, due to the bulk creep compliance approaching zero. Now that we have characterized the viscoelasticity of our pristine epoxy, we can move forward to the pH resistive model. The representative volume element in the upper left corner consists of a statistical conductor network generated with pseudo-random spatial and orientation distribution. The RVE undergoes two steps, first a mechan mechanical simulation with the viscoelastic matrix present to determine the location and orientation changes of the carbon nanotubes. This is illustrated in the above row of the presented figure. The updated conductor network is then utilized in an electric simulation to determine the current and electrical resistance with Ohm's law. This workflow is presented in the lower row of the provided figure and results in the percolated network on the right hand side. The underlying strain sensitivity of the conducting network stems from the electron tunneling phenomenon that is described by the Landauer's equation. A detailed description is provided in our previous papers. Here we can see the relative resistance change when an extension of 1% strain is applied, held constant for stress relaxation, and eventually released for force-free shape recovery. First, the resistance relaxation provided in red in the left figure should be noted. Despite a constant axial strain, the corresponding electrical resistance in this direction does not remain constant. If we take a look at the figure on the right-hand side, we find the explanation. While the axial strain is maintained during stress relaxation, the transverse strains continue to grow in magnitude, which leads to an increasing compaction of the conductor network and an associated decrease in electrical resistance. Secondly, the shape recovery represented by yellow lines indicates a hysteresis upon unloading of the sample. Again, the strains in the right figure provide the explanation. Neither the axial nor the transverse strain return close to zero, causing a different deformation state compared to the reference configuration within the nanotube network. Here we see the underlying mechanism on the nanoscale causing the macroscopic hysteresis and resistance relaxation. The histograms provide an overview of the resistivity of all active tunneling pairs. On the left-hand side, the gray bars represent the tunneling distribution at the beginning and the orange outline the tunneling distribution after the load cycle. A clear shift towards high resistivity can be observed here, which ultimately leads to the observed macroscopic hysteresis. Similarly, the right histogram provides the tunneling distribution at the beginning and end of the stress relaxation. Although of smaller magnitude, again a shift towards higher resistivities can be observed here and ultimately causes the resistance relaxation during stress relaxation. Now let me conclude my presentation by summarizing our findings. First, the assumption of a constant Poisson ratio in viscoelasticity was proven to be oversimplifying when studying pH resistivity under the influence of viscoelasticity. Second, the determination of a multi-axial viscoelastic master curve strongly suggests the assumption of a constant bulk modulus to be the superior approach. And third, viscoelasticity by itself can lead to hysteresis and resistance relaxation over time by altering the separation distances and alignment angles of tunneling carbon nanotube pairs. As a next step, we aim for extending the uniaxial pH resistive equation to the three-dimensional case with Ohm's law in vector form. And this brings my presentation, Relaxation of Electrical Resistance in Carbon Nanotube Polymer Composites, to an end. I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to answering any questions during our ritual session on January 4th.